Hey there everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. Tonight looks set to be clear for a few hours and that's just the perfect opportunity we've been waiting for to finish shooting a particular target that me and Chloe have both been working on for a while, the Cone and Foxfur Nebula. So we've used every single clear night for a month now in order to gather every scrap of data that we possibly can for this target as it's quite a challenging one and requires as much light as you can get for it but I think tonight looks like the right night to finish things on as it's going to be the last clear night for about a week now I think. Well, the scope needs to finish cooling and there's still a couple of scattered clouds around that need to clear up before we can make a start on finishing this project. So I'm going to go ahead and wait now for a little while and come back out soon. Luckily for us, we weren't waiting too long for those clouds to finally clear up. And at that point, my girlfriend Chloe went outside and start to get the rig ready for a full night of imaging. She began first by going through the process of achieving an accurate polar alignment. That's the real foundation of any deep sky imaging session. Next, she plate solved us back to the target using a set of custom coordinates from a previous session. And finally, once we were aligned accurately with the target, it was time to set off auto guiding and trigger an auto focus ready for the session to begin. While that first exposure is just coming in now, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the rig that we've been using for this entire project, for anybody who doesn't know yet. So the telescope that we're using right here is a Redcap 51 by William Optics. It's a Petzval Super Apo telescope and it just works phenomenally well. We've been so happy with that thing since purchase and I really don't have a bad word to say about it. On the back of that is an ASI 1600mm Pro monochrome camera with a ZWO filter wheel and a matching set of astronomic narrowband filters including LRGB as well for different types of targets. Now we got the optional mounting handle for the red cat which means that we can put a guide scope straight on top of it and we were using a 120mm guiding scope for a long while but Chloe decided this Christmas she'd like to upgrade and so she got herself a Skywatcher Evo guide and indeed I got one of those too at Christmas time and we've both been Again, very, very happy with that indeed. It's a little bit overkill for this system as effectively it's guiding at the same focal length as it's actually imaging at. The uh, Evo guide is 242 millimeters focal length and the Red Cat is 250. This whole thing, of course, as you can see, is riding on an EQ6. Again, a little bit overkill, but it definitely gives us some flexibility with different systems we can put onto that mount because it will carry quite a heavy load. And the whole thing, rather pleasingly is powered by Chloe's ASI Air Pro and again it's just one of those things that really just falls into the background because it just works so flawlessly you don't have to think about it you don't have to worry about it you can just get on with enjoying astronomy So I just wanted to quickly show you what one of these five minute exposures is looking like on the screen. This is the full view. Uh, we're shooting this at gain 139, which I believe is unit again for the 1600. And as you can see, it's having no problem at all picking up lots and lots of hydrogen each frame. Indeed, there is the cone itself, uh, nicely excavated from that background noise. And the fox fur is just up here. And if you'll notice, kind of hidden down away at the bottom is also Hubble's variable nebula right there. That's a cool thing to pick up in such a small telescope, I think. Well, I've just had a quick check and we're over 200 frames deep into this project now. These are five minute frames between hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur. Those are the channels that we've been shooting this target in. Uh, 
Really, with this thing being totally automated, all that's left for me to do now is set up a time lapse and head off inside and warm up. So I'll catch up with you all in a little while. Well, according to the weather forecast I've just checked, it looks like we're entering our last hour of shooting on this target now. And I have to say, using this red cat, as in all the sessions before, has been an absolute, honestly, a real pleasure. It's a fantastic little rig to use. And really, I've been thinking about it, and it's probably the next best thing to own in a permanent observatory because it's so easy to carry out and get up and running. It takes minutes, especially when you're using that ASI air system because it's really quite seamless and smooth. And... Uh, it doesn't take long to cool down it's almost like having like i say again an observatory where your scope's always kind of acclimated and uh, it's just a fantastic rig to use it's a really uh, it's a really nice way to shoot i've nothing bad to say about it all that remains to be done now is to just shoot on until the clouds come and then take some flats and i think that's about everything on this project so since the shoot is nearly at an end i think i should probably wrap the video up now too and just say i hope you've enjoyed watching this video it's certainly been fun to record and share this one it's been very very easy really to gather in the data with this system it takes absolutely no nannying or anything like that it really is a pleasure to use so uh, i hope that that comes across in the video and that you've enjoyed watching and as always i just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's watching and all the support that you give me i really do appreciate it guys so thank you honestly and i think that said that's probably all I've got for tonight. So until next time, clear skies.